Welcome back, my Grotten Gets. We are Happy Crumpet Wargaming, and we are super excited to bring this to you. This is one of the biggest decisions that you're going to make in the game of Warhammer 40,000 in 10th edition. How do we choose our secondaries? Well, fear not, all of you lads and lasses out there. Today, we are going to learn how to choose all the correct secondaries so that we always smash our opponents with a proper Crumpet Ink. So, let's just jump right into it. Today, we have two options. We have two options, guys, and this is the really intense strategy as the works on the page here are pointing it out to you. We have to figure out, are we taking Fixed or are we taking Dactical? This is a big strategic choice, and you're going to have to, and all jokes aside, it actually is a very big strategic choice. Um, but it's basically what's going to define our game. So, some people currently are really uh, down on the secondary system in 10th edition, and I think they're all fools. I had a very dear friend of mine, who I respect a lot, uh, say something to me. He said, secondaries are just nonsense. Like, what if you just draw bad? It's like, um, well, then that means you shouldn't have taken tactical. You probably should have planned on taking fixed, right? Uh, so, currently, secondaries, as, as far as I've been involved in the hobby, is the most fair, balanced, awesome mechanism that they've had. So... 9th edition secondaries was nonsense. 10th edition secondaries is freaking awesome. Okay, so let's just hop right on into um, which armies are going to be better at fixed versus tactical. And this is a really interesting conversation to have. Um, so a lot of times your armies with very predictable game plans. So let's say Necrons, for example. What are they going to do? They're going to move on to the objectives and they're going to stand there. They like fixed. Um, they're, they can essentially... If you can put a pistol down somewhere, so like your Hexmark Destroyers, which are freaking awesome, these guys can just always get you, uh, whatever it's called, deploy teleport hummers, whether it's in the middle of the deployment zone or middle of the map or in your opponent's deployment zone because they can just deep strike in. You kill them. They spend one CP to resurrect at the end of the phase. They just do it again next turn. So Necrons are amazing at fixed uh, secondaries. Interestingly enough, they're also amazing at tactical secondaries. So th that's a really, really fascinating little balance they have. Then, when we're talking about like what's going to be really, really great at your, say, tactical secondaries, well, these are going to be armies with multiple drops, high levels of reactive play. Uh, Grey Knights might not be the best example of multiple drops, but Grey Knights being able to teleport all over the place, constantly be anywhere on the battlefield that they want to be, is a good example of a great secondary play army. Can they play fixed? Of course. Guys, there's a lot of crossover here. So your army does not necessarily dictate what you choose. Um, Tyranids are a great example of this. Tyranids, at the beginning of the, of the edition, everyone just knew Tyranids are always going to get 40 on secondaries because it's really hard to stop. They just take a Biovore, they drop that little spore mine somewhere, and suddenly they get engaged, they get behind me lines, they get deployed teleport homers for max points with that uh, with that little uh, spore mine. It's a really, really good, good game plan just to max your secondaries. So Tyranids can do that, but what does that also mean they can do? Well, they can do tactical secondaries. Um... So we're going to decide how do these armies figure out if they want to do fixed or tactical because there are benefits to doing both. So let's check it out. Fixed. Let's look at the positives for our fixed. Okay. Sometimes <laughs> uh, cleanse and teleport homers is an amazing, amazing option if your army is equipped with pistols or you've just got plenty of monsters vehicles and some good OC. So if you know that you can control the primary and you have, say, monster mash or your army just has a bunch of pistols like, say, orcs, for example. Like in orcs, everyone has a freaking pistol or a slugger. Well, cleanse can be an absolutely awesome option because you can be engaged in melee on an objective that your high OC is holding and you're just scoring cleanse. Uh, that's pretty sick. <laughs> uh, same thing with a monster vehicle mesh, right? So uh, knights might actually like this a lot. A lot of times, actually might, knights probably hate it to be honest with you because they always want to be shooting. Ah, never mind, ignore that. Knights knights are, are actually really don't like, like to, having to dedicate a unit to do a secondary. But anyway, so cleanse and teleport homers is generally speaking one of the best blends and this works amazingly well for monster mashes and pistol heavy armies armies that naturally generate cp are gonna like fixed because one of the big benefits for tactical spoiler alert is gonna be that it actually generates you bonus cp and i know me when i play i use my cp all the time so i i, I am attracted to tactical secondaries in general so armies that naturally generate your cp say you're playing impure uh in adeptus uh no, oh, jeez, Imperial Guard. <laughs> Odessa Miltarum. Yep. So, say you're playing Imperial Guard. You're playing Eldar, where that stupid Autark is already is always giving you free CP. Armies that have already generated that CP tend to like fixed. Uh, so orcs can kind of do it with Gretchen, although it's not super reliable. 
So these are types of armies that already have the ability to generate CP like Fix because they don't need the CP for discarding card uh, secondaries in Tactical. Uh, this gives you a very, very predictable game plan, and it's exceptionally easy for you to account for in your list building. If you know that you're always going to need a unit with a pistol or a monster that is able to shoot while they're engaged in melee, that makes it super, super easy for you to guess or to, to predict how to make your list so that you can always score the secondaries that you've done, which is really, really big positive. And it's generally accepted, um, and this is maybe my generally accepted, but fixed Planning on fixed is generally going to be better for team matches. Uh, that doesn't mean it's bad for individual matches by any means. But if you're playing a team tournament, a lot of times you want to build your list for fixed more than tactical because your accurate predictions in teams, which is, spoiler alert, in my opinion, the best way to play a 440,000, although I do still love individuals, uh, it, it makes it much easier to predict accurate results for your matches so that you can do your pairings correctly. So there's a lot of positives, a lot of, a lot of positives for fixed. Let's talk about some of the negatives for fixed. Uh, I put the Necrons on there because that's negative. Anyway, uh, for our negatives on fixed, generally speaking, you're going to be reliant on one secondary to be given up, whether that's going to be assassinate or bring it down. Or even if it's like something, uh, you're, you're you, sometimes you can do, you can even consider that like bring it uh, to, or deploy teleport homers is the thing that has to be given up, right? So if your opponent's not good at screening their deployment zone, let's say custodians, for example, they can't really screen their deployment zone. Well, they've given up deploy teleport homers because you can just deep strike in your teleport homers, for example. Uh, and the, one of the positives for our fixed secondaries was it's a very predictable game plan that you can uh, account for. Well, one of the negatives for fixed secondaries is it's a very predictable game plan and your opponent knows where you're going to be and what you're trying to accomplish. It's kind of hard to hide your game plan when you basically say, hey, listen, I'm going to stand on this objective and I'm going to do cleanse and I'm going to do deploy teleprimers. It gives your opponent an insight into what you're trying to do, which helps them counter it. Um, some armies don't really care, but some armies really do care. Then what we have is you become less reliable when you have poor OC, if you lack pistols, if you lack disposable monsters or vehicles. If you lack these units that can just constantly do these actions and you don't care if they really activate, so Imperial Knights, for example, Imperial Knights, they might have all the monsters that can do the actions while they're engaged or vehicles that can do the actions while they're engaged, but they have such a low model combat, model count army that they have to be activating every single turn. They can't really afford not to shoot a lot of times. So... It's a little give and take, but you, you have to have the disposable units or the units that you just don't care if they activate or not. So a lot of times your Necrons say with Warrior Spam, they just don't care if they activate because their game plan is just to not die. And they're really good at that. <laughs> um, yeah. So then if you have no way of generating extra CP, you can get a little screwed here. Uh, I'm looking at you, Custodes. So Custodes, even with all the nerfs, they are still very playable. If you go check out my teaching stream, I just... Uh, be Eldar with um, Custodes, and I taught how to use the multiple rapid ingress stratagem. It was a really good, <laughs> really good video. But anyway, they don't have the ability to generate extra CP. So they're kind of reliant, in my opinion, on tactical secondaries in order to generate the extra CP. Uh, then it also, when you're taking fixed, it makes it really challenging to recover from bad dice. So what happens if you say, fail to score your secondaries in turn one? Well, you can never make that up because all of your secondaries, their max, the maximum amount that you can score them per turn is going to be four. So if you score zero secondaries turn one, the maximum you can do is 32 on your secondaries out of 40. That's not awesome. So you, you have to be consistently scoring. So it is a little bit of a problem with fixed, but there's also a lot of positives like we spoke about. Let's talk about the positives for tactical because I love positives. So we always do positives for sure. Tactical positives, bonus CP. This is freaking huge as some armies are just starved for that CP. I'm thinking about my Custodes. Yes, I'm actually thinking about my Orcs. I know there's a lot of Orc players who like Fixed because our Grats can generate CP, but I have to I have to have my CP when I'm playing my Orcs. Um, I am a notorious CP whore. So even though I have my Grats trying to generate me CP, if I miss it, I have to be able to discard. So I'll have the CP to use Art as Nails to make my things unkillable or whatever. So this is a huge positive for tactical. It can help you generate extra CP. It allows for a primary focused game. So you can do, and this is what I preach with my custodians, for example. Um, you can say, listen, out of 90 victory points that are available, because you get 10 just for painting your models. So there's 90 victory points available. 50 points of those is primary. So if I'm playing my custodians and I'm like, hey, listen, I'm not good at secondaries, what can I do? 
well, I can hold primary and I can deny you primary. So at this point, if I score 50 primary and you score zero primary, it's impossible for you to win. Now, that's not necessarily realistic. You're going to score some primary. But when I'm doing this, what I know is that all I have to score is some secondary while I max my primary and you score bad primary, which means you're going to have to score all of your secondary. So that's, that's one of the reasons why tactical can be really good because in tactical secondaries, seven out of the 16 uh, secondaries are scored just by holding primary. So your armies that are focused on this is my primary tend to like tactical secondaries because area denial, storm hostile objectives, secure no man's land, whatever. All of these are simple, extend battle lines. All of these are just by holding primary scored. So it can be really, really useful as tactical secondaries can be very, very useful if your army is focused on that primary. This allows for huge swings in expected results because let's say you're in a team tournament and you're going with you you just have no good matchup into a really messed up list let's say it's like i don't know four blitz or three units of four, four blitz and then you got your your forge feed something no one wants to fight well if you just get good tactical draws you can end up doing much better into that army than you were expecting which can really swing the thing for your team so sometimes it's, it can be it can be actually a very useful thing to do tactical with that uh, generally speaking, tactical has much higher scoring potential than fixed, because if you score zero secondaries turn one, you can still max your secondaries because you can draw investigate signals for eight, for eight victory points. You can draw capture enemy outposts for eight victory points. You can draw, you can get five victory points for most of your uh, secondaries. So it gives you more leeway where you don't actually have to score turn one, which is actually very freaking nice. And then you can, like I said, yeah, so you can, you can even still max, even if you score nothing turn one. So. That's tactical positives. Let's talk about tact tactical negatives. You can get screwed by bad draws. Now let's have a brief conversation about this. Yes, this is possible. However, I have not had a single game in 10th, and I'm oh, well over 100 games at this point, where I lost the game because I got screwed by tactical draws the whole game. Maybe there was one clutch turn where if I had a good draw, I could have won, but that's not me getting screwed. That's me. I just didn't get lucky for one turn, right? Um, there, there's not, a, there hasn't been a single game where I have had nothing but uh, secondaries that I haven't been able to score all, all, all game. That being said, it is possible. However, if you're running into a situation where you're consistently getting screwed by bad draws, what I would posit to you is that you have made an army that's made to score fixed and it's not made to score tactical. If your army is actually designed to score tactical secondaries, you're not going to be getting screwed by taking tactical secondaries. What ends up happening is people make a army that is designed to score fixed and they choose tactical. They will get screwed by bad draws. So make sure that you design your army for however you're planning on playing them. If you're planning on playing a fixed list, build a list to play fixed. You're looking at pistols. You're looking at monsters that can shoot in melee. Um, all these types of things. You look, you, you already have CP that is going to be generated. If you're trying to play a game for tactical, you don't need those things. <laughs> you're playing for tactical. Okay. Um, the unpredictable game plan can be, <laughs> it requires some very, very careful positioning and deployment. So one of the things I always like to do when I'm playing with my custodes, for example, is I always take my Eversore Assassin and I put him in position to score me area denial turn one. Or I put him in position where he can get me a tempting target if I draw it. And I have... Uh, my sisters of silence maybe their position to get me an early investigate signals if I draw it. So you have to be ready to respond to whatever you may draw. Okay? And then you do require dedicated action monkeys to maximize your tactical secondaries. So you're going to have to have like these throwaway 50 point units that can just go and do those actions that you know are going to die after they do the action. And that's not a problem for a lot of armies. Some armies it's it's a, it's a little hard for, but it's not not a problem for most armies, for a lot of armies. And then it, it just can be swingy, right? I mean, sometimes you score 20 points on your secondary. Sometimes you score 40 points on your secondary. It's just, it's just a little more swingy. However, that is my personal preferred style of playing 40K. So I generally go tactical. I don't think one is better than the other, but they are very different dependent upon the army that you're running. Let's take a look at this real quick. This was actually a really, really cool thing that was uh, posted by Goonhammer. So credits to them. I'm going to put a link to their website down below in the description. So Goonhammer did all of this. They have an awesome app, and this is just, they're, they're not sponsoring this video or anything, but this, it's just an awesome app. It's what I use. It's called uh, Tabletop Battles. It's how I track most of my data. Um, seriously, download it. It's freaking great. Um, they, these guys worked really hard on it.
Uh, that's just, just a little free promo for them. Not that they need it. They're pretty huge. So basically what we're looking at here is when, you're, when we see our fixed secondary mission scoring, these are just the amount of games they attract. I think they posted this like a month or two ago. It should be a lot more data now. But it said, bring it down. It's chosen about 50% of the time that people take fixed secondaries. And on average, people are scoring about 11 victory points off of it. Okay. Uh, deploy teleport homer, uh, about 10 victory points off of it. So it probably should be chosen a little bit more. Um, so this is just giving you an idea of how often people were taking these secondaries and how many victory points they could generally score on it. So one of the things that I think that we're really, really looking at here is you need to be able to score these secondaries if you choose these secondaries. So if you choose engage on all, on all fronts, you must have the units that can get you engaged on all fronts. So Grey Knights can do it. Uh, Tyranids can do it exceptionally, exceptionally well. But if you don't have the ability to consistently get yourself in four table quarters or at least three table quarters, don't take it. It's a terrible option. Uh, Storm Hostile Objective is just generally speaking a bad choice. You just pretty much don't want to take it. Um, I can't really think of a situation where Storm Hostile is the one that you want to take as a... Nah, I just can't. Um, then when we look at our tactical mission scoring, this is also giving you average victory points that people are scoring. So extend battle lines, average 4.2. It means most of the time when you draw it, you score it, right? Because you technically score five points for having it. So that can be a little bit confusing when you're just looking at the mathematics of it. But it means that when you draw extend battle lines, you're going to score it, essentially. Um, I just found these stats really, really fascinating for me. Um, not really sure how people can use these in making them, but in, in making decisions. But it's just a little bit fascinating. I got two more slides for you guys, then I'm going to let you go. Should I defer my secondary? All right, so this is actually a really big question. So what happens when you're playing tactical and you draw two secondaries, maybe you score one and the other one is, let's say, assassinate. And you're like, oh, I didn't score it this turn, but I could score it next turn. Well, here's the deal. Should you defer your secondaries? Generally speaking, the answer is going to be no. And let me tell you why. Because if you keep that assassinate, and let's say you're engaged with a character that you expect to kill next turn. Well, what your opponent has the ability to do now just goes, okay, cool. I'm just going to fall back. You won't kill the character and you're stuck for another turn scoring nothing on secondary. Now, if you know for a fact that you can score this next turn, okay, keep it. And I've done this sometimes. Like I know for a fact that next turn's my go turn and I'm going to get bring it down. Maybe I'll keep bring it down, right? But when you hold on to a secondary, it really gives your, your opponent an opportunity to screw you by just not engaging or engaging in an area where you can't score that secondary. So be very, very cautious if you want to defer your secondary to next turn. Um, so if you 100% know you'll score it, keep it. But essentially, you're just you're, you're never going to want to hold on to capture any outpost if you draw turn one, hoping and praying that you're going to score it turn three or four. It's not worth it. Don't do it. You'll never score the points back and you're probably going to lose. Last slide and then we're done for the day. So what are acceptable secondaries to score? Well, here's the deal, guys. You really need approximately 10 points on a secondary to be able to consider it. If you can't, if you if you can't guarantee 10 points, you cannot consider it. And when I mean guarantee, I mean guarantee. Um, the only reason that would be a little bit. Uh, this is obviously talking about uh, fixed, right? So, if, if I'm playing Tyranids, I know for a fact that I will score 10 on engage on all fronts because I can always spawn a spore mine. I have a ripper swarm that can come in. And my opponent can't screen three quarters of the table. So I am always going to score 10 points. And I should at least one round be able to score four points. Or because there's two, I, I'm going to score two points every round. And at least once I should be able to score four points by getting that fourth quarter. Because generally when you're in round four or five, it becomes really hard to deploy to screen even your, um, your opponent's main uh, table quarter. So generally speaking, your Tyranids can, can get pretty much crap to practically guarantee that they'll score 10, and chances are super high that they'll score 12 or 14. So in that situation, it's an acceptable secondary. No other army can really do that outside of maybe Grey Knights, but even Grey Knights, I don't, I don't think they can actually guarantee that. So for example, Engage is generally a bad choice unless you're Tyranids, more or less. So you need to guarantee 10 points. Now this opens up something that uh, <laughs> that I use to trap my opponents all the freaking time. If you remember one thing from this video, this is probably the most important th thing to know about this video. In my list, I always bait people with secondaries. So my orcs, I always give up exactly 20 points or roughly, sometimes it's 22 points, but I always pretty much intentionally give up that many points on bring it down. So my opponent sees it and goes, oh, I can max bring it down. Maybe that's a good choice. Well, 
Let me tell you what I do every single time that people bring shoes, bring it down for me. I start all of my troops in their trucks. Turn one, I disembark from my trucks and I use it to give myself free movement to get to wherever I need to go. And then I just pull my trucks back and I use them to screen. And my opponent never kills my trucks and they end up scoring like an eight on bringing it down when they were expecting a 20. I use it as a trap to screw people. Your opponents will do the same as well when you're playing at competitive levels. So just be aware of that. All right, Grass and Gets, this was it. This was in a really good succinct video on how to score your secondaries i think i gave you guys a lot of information to think about if i missed anything please type it down in the comment section and i always read the comment section and i respond to practically every single comment on the video at least for the first few days sometimes i miss some if you post like i don't know several like several weeks later i might miss a few of those comments but if, if it's in the first few days i respond to every single comment and i really really do appreciate you guys being able to give a little bit of your wisdom out there as well if you guys haven't gotten a chance Go ahead and check out the members only section of the discord if you would like to help support me in the work that i do you can access that via my ko-fi link which is down below and you can also use the same link to check out uh coaching services as well if you're looking for awesome terrain Wayland utani is the best in the business they make all the competitive terrain done for wtc specifically and they do all that terrain they put it all out they have the best battle maps in the entire industry use code crumping5 for five percent off their link is also down in the description below thank you all for your support and have an amazing freaking day bye bye crump on